Welcome back everyone to Owl Stretching Time, our Disney Plus live reaction to the Owl House. And it's time for sports! Oh! It's time for sports ball, everyone. Yes, I already saw a couple of uh, screenshots, so I know a certain uh, hunter is going to appear in this episode, quite obviously. It'll be interesting to see how he gets into this particular setting. And we're going to see it in today's episode. Any sport in a storm. Surprised at how much uh, Grudge Reball we're uh, seeing in this uh, series. But then again, you know, it's based on Harry Potter, and we saw a lot of Quidditch, so it makes sense, I guess. More it's a parody, and they literally poke fun at how uh, stupid the rules of Quidditch are. <laughs> yeah, that I definitely agree with. At the time, I never realized just how stupid the rules of Quidditch were, like the whole thing with the snitch. I guess because it seemed like it was so hard to catch, that's why it seemed like they could potentially win without catching it or whatever, but yeah. The fact that it was it's such an easy win and it just negates all of the efforts mm -hmm. of the rest of the team, yeah, that just... <laughs> Not to mention the game doesn't even end until they find it, and sometimes that could take days. What was it? I think I read in uh, Quidditch throughout the ages, and the longest game ever was like three months long or something, mm -hmm. and the players just kept switching out or whatever just to keep it going. I'm like... Come on, at some point you gotta mm -hmm. like throw in the towel. Then it just gets ridiculous. It's like, what if you had two really sucky teams? You mm -hmm. just keep watching them suck over and over again. And the point is, Quidditch is stupid. Mm -hmm. But we're not watching Quidditch, we're watching Grudgeby, which seems to be a lot more hardcore. And hopefully they get rid of that stupid, uh, what was that thing that they had to catch? The golden smidge. The smidge, yeah. Rusty smidge, I forget what it was. <laughs> the rusty smidge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't remember it either. But and anywho, we'll see just what happens in a real actual game today. So let's get started and see what happens when we watch Hunter become a sports fan. <laughs> oh, real quick quick disclaimer. Um, if I sound a little weird, it's because I just had my, uh, my surgery done. I might, like cough or something throughout this or sneeze unintentionally but I will try my best to edit around this so apologize if you have to listen to my nasliness <laughs> but anywho let's get started and play yeah it does look good as new mm. he actually put it on the band-aid I have no idea why I'm doing it good you're all here we can get started I said wait come back here no respect. Darius, no respect at all. Everyone. Why is everyone leaving? We decided to reschedule the meeting, so go play arts and crafts, or whatever it is you do. Oh, looks like you've already started. <laughs> this is impressively bad. Wait, is this the old Golden Guard situation? Of course it is! And this is no way to treat the Emperor's nephew. I knew your predecessor. He was my mentor. One of the strongest witches I've ever known. Hmm. But you, hmm. The fellow says I don't need magic to serve the covenant. And I say you don't deserve to wear that patch. What should I do? How do I earn it? Oh, sweet mother of titans, I, I don't know. Find new recruits for the Emperor's covenant. The best and the brightest witches in all the land. Then maybe you can get this back. I'll do it. Of course you will. You're very good at doing exactly what you're told. Mm. I don't get why they would dis disrespect him when he's basically the voice of Bellos at the moment. I think because of nepotism and stuff. Yeah. Plus, like I said, he knew the former Golden Guard, mm. which I guess maybe was his father. I'm on my way to becoming the witch I wanna be. Live to win you till you die. I had the Liger, girl. Knock him dead. <laughs> I am the liger. <laughs> oh, little pigtails are so cute. Oh, shit. Oh, no, the locker's gone rogue. And that's why we try not to keep our lunches in the lockers. <laughs> so, ready for the club fair, Willow? Yeah. Thanks, but I'm interested in something with a little more drama. Flair and face paint. I'm so excited to hear the next words out of your mouth. <laughs> Not Grudge Beat. Today, I'm starting Hexide's first Flyer Derby team. So it's basically capture the flag on uh, broomsticks? With an element of chicken? Mm. Journey with us to a world of magic unlike any other! Well, a bit like this world, except we're down for ages 6 to 11. Why isn't anyone interested? The are 
Hearts doesn't do it any favors. Not judging a book by its cover is a baby rule, even babies know. Hey, the prose can be phony, but it's also the crackling emotions, the convoluted magic system, the smell of the pages. Oh, God. <laughs> the author of Azura is having a signing this afternoon at the book nook. What? You are much less excited than I imagined. I'm just confused. The author is human. No, she's not. She's from the demon realm. How do you think I got mine? I should have figured. How do you think I got mine? Whoa! Hey! See? Human! Can the author of a sword travel between realms? Mm. Get off me! <laughs> should have figured as much. You guys are cute! I still have more friends than you! Psst. You're a liar and you know it. These <laughs> potential recruits. Teens are probably into the same things as me. Like authority. Hello, fellow teenagers. <laughs> Ignore the fact that we never met. What if I told you all your dreams could come true, and you just have to leave your home, friends, and family forever? Uh, <laughs> what, do you think these are cool? Not as cool as the Emperor's Coven. I hear you get to sleep in until 6 a.m. <laughs> How would you like to rise to the top by joining the Emperor's Coven? When I get older, I'm gonna give this system a long overdue update. What are you nice. talking about? I'm good to see all the uh, kids from the detention track thriving now. Yeah. All across the aisles in rocket outfits and working as a team. I've never seen cover approvals this year, but I just don't think Fire Derby is worth investigating. Just because it's not as well known as Grudge Beat doesn't mean. Do you misunderstand me? I'm shutting it down unless you step down as captain. I just don't think quitters make good leaders. You're just wow. Go fudge yourself. Okay. Put together a team for a friendly game of fire derby after school. <laughs> you can lead your team to victory. Maybe I'll approve your cup. That's why he's a, he's a former world. player, so that's a snob and a gatekeeper. But Amity and Luce are busy, and I don't know where to find enough decent players this fast. Way back at Hey you! Let's ball. Wanna join my fire derby team? <laughs> that works. <laughs> Should have figured Hunter would not know how to interact with normal people. Probably, I'm normal! <laughs> he's probably been like cooped up in like Bella's castle like his entire life. Heck, I bet Luce is like the first person that Zonate's ever talked mm. to. And I kind of figured with the author too, considering how very similar a lot of the magic and the storylines are to the Boiling Isles and what's going on there. I sort of figured. I think the question is, is she human or is she uh, elf? I feel like she's elf and she's making it look like she's human. So I don't know why Luce thought that having that book club would work, considering, you know, everyone there does the magic that they can do in the book plus better. She got King sucked into our horrible fandom. <laughs> well, King doesn't know any better. <laughs> Future captain of Hexide's first Flyer Derby team. You're a new student, right? Yeah. Weird, we've never seen you around. What's your Oh, name? that's true. They wouldn't know he's the Golden Guard. Caleb! Uh, Jasper! Mug Williams! I just transferred from. The Toes? What? I'm not here to play fly to me or whatever that is. Do you really think your club will attract the best and the brightest? Absolutely. Flyer Derby's not for the faith witch. Then maybe I will give it a try. Really? But okay. How do we evaluate others? A witch's duel? A maze full of traps? I'll <laughs> leave everyone at the top of a mountain and see who makes it back to the bottom alive. <laughs> Classic. Um, he might not have time for all that, but you can help by attracting people with your six sky skills. Hey, I don't know what kind of mission you're on, but it's been a tough year for Willow. And she's really looking forward to making this team a thing. Don't mess this up for her. Hmm. Do you think she has her own portal? Bones have a she's related to that human guy, Philip? What if the author is Ida? She's been keeping it secret this whole time because she's embarrassed by all the spelling errors. <laughs> okay, these theories are a little unrealistic. It's obviously your mother as a teenager sent forward in time to try <laughs> 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 Sentient teeth? 
Guarantee the, these are all real uh, fan theories too. Oh, uh, she got canceled already. She transphobed too. No. Like the Simpsons proved, she's not really the author. She's just the photo for the cover. Right. Wait on you, buddy. Thanks for asking me to join, guys. I think we're gonna have a <gasps> Jerbo <Traitor. laughs> Fun afternoon. <laughs> oh, you're going down. Wait, they're allowed to do that? Guys, that was amazing. Not a bad start. Oh. Oh. She's right there. Don't you see? Meh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. 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 selective on who they took. Mm -hmm. Seriously, that's a dick thing to do. Like, you play one good game and suddenly you decide, oh yeah, they're Emperor's Coven material. Especially given that they're Luce's friends. Mm -hmm. Sucky thing is now I think that uh, Will's not going to be allowed on a team. It sucks because they were really good. Yep. 
And she was driving as team captain. Also, Gus is going to be super pissed. He warned Hunter. He's going to waste all sorts of illusion magic on him. Listen, I'm sorry about this whole cell thing, but did you really have to punch Steve, Scara? I get it. Emotions are running high. Ice pack for Steve. Oh, I don't get it. You're joining the best coven there is. You can keep all your magic. You can Forcefully. Board, you can even play flyer derby on your day off. Well, this year's day is already passed. But next year's only 52 weeks away. We don't care. None of us want this. You will eventually. Trust me, I'm your friend now. Friends don't stab each other in the back. I sure they do. The coven heads do it all the time back at the castle. <laughs> Captain, you're on my side, right? thought I could be good at this. But we're here because I made a bad call. I'm just... Cycling through the fan theories. Ah. Ah. Should have known. Tanella Nosa? She's had a name this whole time? Zip! <laughs> Sorry, boss. The jig is up. <gasps> oh! Edited a few more of those author photos, boss. Really? Minus work. <gasps> Loose? J you again, too? Oh, oh calm down. <laughs> Human garbage is constantly leaking into our water. About a year ago, I found this box of books washed up on the shore. I've been trying to make a sale of it ever since, but no one's buying! Wait, I'm still getting paid for this, right? Not now, kid. According <laughs> to the owner of the book nook, he's only ever had one customer purchase from the series. Meh. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I swear. This is the worst scam I've ever run! The author is human after all. Oh! Were you expecting some dramatic discovery? <laughs> <laughs> Why did he keep up the scam if uh, nobody was buying? You're gonna need to be a little more clever than that. Serious! Oh yeah! Land the ship! Right! Did you really think you could get away with endangering a coven head? Do you have any idea what I'm capable of? Out of my way, little prince. No! I was mistaken. These four are insolent agitators who aren't fit for the Emperor's coven. And I'm unfit to wear the sigil of the Golden Guard. You can go. Please, Captain. Let's move, team. We need to find a replacement. After all, it'll be 52 weeks before Caleb's next day off. Mm. You befriended them, and then you disobeyed me to protect them? I'm impressed. I had you all wrong. Huh? You're what, 16? It's about time you made connections outside the castle. I was just gonna drop them off at Hexside. We have more than enough recruits, in my opinion. Are you going to tell Bellis about this? Are you going to tell him about your secret talisman? <laughs> Magic or not, I think you'll make your predecessors proud. Huh. Well. So he's not as much as an asshole we thought he was. Ah. But you could still use a sewing lesson. Hmm. The Zora's author may be a human, but I'm human too. Sometimes it's nice to be reminded that you don't need to be a powerful ancient witch to make something special. Well, I had fun coming up with those theories. Hmm. They were like our own stories. 
What if the Azora Book Club was also a writing club? Well, what would be our first writing prompt? The mystery of <gasps> what they were up to all night. Did yeah. <laughs> he just make an account? Wow. A story he meet B story. Tiger. <laughs> He's worse than my dad. <laughs> oh, hey guys. So, how was our to school? Did we miss anything? Just um, uh, our first team win is the Emerald Entrails. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you chase fan theories? You miss out on cool stuff like this. That was a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> also, wasn't Dana Terrace's self insert? Didn't she wind up getting a writing contract? Yeah, she worked with that one guy that tried to like enslave uh, King. King, yeah. yeah. Well, I think she was just in on the scan as like the face or the profile mm. or something. Because I assume since the author actually is human, you know, she's basically a stand in. Mm. But then again, why would they even, like you said, have the whole meet and greet if they could barely sell any books? I don't know. This feel, I feel like they originally had no intention of divulging the whole thing about the authors, but so many fan theories kept coming up. So like, let's just come up with the worst one possible just to get people off our backs. We'll, we'll just grab like two of the most despicable people in this show. I mean, honestly, it's like it felt like they just needed an excuse to bring them back. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of in continuity, though. Like, they're saying, you know, trash from the human world's always leaking into mm. their world. Although I'm surprised they didn't ask you know, exactly where it was leaking mm. from. They could have at least found, like, a, a little loophole or something. They were too disappointed to ask. Yeah. I gotta say, this was, like, a rather fascinating one. And actually, a pretty good example of uh, recycling trauma, mm. when you think about it. Because... Look at Hunter. He spent his whole life pretty much secluded, going through the ringer of being part of the Emperor's Coven and everything, pretty much accepting that his training slash abuse was necessary for him to be who he is. And then he perpetuates the same type onto his new friends, thinking it's good for him. And it's only once he gets an outside eye that he realizes that it's not. I am surprised, though, that, uh, what's his name, Darius, was it? The, the uh, Covenant? Yeah, the Abomination mm. Covenant. Yeah. yeah, that he actually is pretty chill, like, or not chill, but, like, you know, actually has, I guess, a conscience or something? I mean, when you think about it, we've already at least gotten to see a couple of the Coven heads and how they act outside of Velos' influence or, you know, in direct opposition to it. Well, mostly that's with Rain, though. But we knew Rain had their own uh, sense of justice and morality, especially since they've hung out with Ida before. But with Darius, the only time we saw him was when he was fighting against Rain and Ida, and he was quite clearly the bad guy in this case. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like in Beast Wars, the Predacons, how so many of them are only part of the Predacons, because Megatron kind of looks the other way on their own agendas. Mm -hmm. So as long as they don't betray him, he doesn't care. And even if they are traitorous, he kind of keeps them under his thumb for the most part. That's kind of the impression that I get. It's, some of these coven heads are pretty much running their own agendas. And as long as Bellos doesn't get in the way of that, it's like, who really cares? I also think of like Food Wars with like... Uh... The, the Elite uh, Ten? Yeah, yeah, and how like they each had their own reasons for following the new head and others defected because of the morality confliction. But uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense in a way. The guy stated that you know he had respect for the Golden Guard title because he said it, it was a former friend of his. Whether or not that was Hunter's you know, father or somebody else, we don't really know. But the point is like he wanted whoever had the title to be worthy of it and Let's face it, Hunter at this stage really isn't. Heck, when we first like meet him, Lilith was saying how annoying he was and how she hates whenever he gets involved and everything. And I mean, we saw how obnoxious he was every time he showed up. He was basically an immature kid. And now in this case, on the one hand, yeah, he was able to get recruits, but he did it forcefully and under false pretenses, which really shouldn't be the case because we were led to believe up to this point that being chosen for the Emperor's Coven was something of, like, the highest regard. I mean, that, look what Lilith did just to get into it. And I was, like, really confused, too, that they were, like, kidnapping them and, like, taking away their palismans and apparently forcing them to go to training and stuff. I'm like, I don't remember them stating any of this. Because if that was the case, then why did Ida want to be part of it initially? Probably just because her sister did. 
I guess. Again, I guess it was like all a ruse and everything just to test the guard and whether or not, you know, he actually had his, like a conscience about him, whether or not he would do things the right way. And I mean, I guess he passed. I mean, Darius seemed to think he grew from this experience of like making friends. I mean, something. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you freaking shelter this guy and don't let him really interact with anybody outside of the, the people that you keep around. I mean, to be fair, I think it's a combination of protecting him and possibly... Manipulating him. Manipulating and possible shame, too, because he, like you said, he is like half a witch, so which means that he's very limited in how he can fight and what he can accomplish and stuff. And on the one hand, it's very easy for him to get into the whole flying game, because, I mean, I don't think you really need to know how to fly so in order to do the, in order to ride the broomstick. I mean, it doesn't look that way. I mean, Luce, we saw, can do it pretty good. But yeah, I guess, I guess just more just trying to get him to do things conventionally instead of, you know, the way Luce does it. I'm glad we have an episode that actually puts Willow and Gus in the A story yeah. and relegates Luce and Amity to the B story. <laughs> yeah, like nothing against them. I like when we focus on them, but Willow and Gus have been kind of sidelined a lot mm -hmm. lately because of, you know, these growths in the story, all these occurrences. But it's good to see they get their own thing, and it's good to see Willow, like, finally, like, coming into her own. And Absolutely. getting over her uh, insecurities and stuff, actually, like, embracing what she knows, what she loves, and, like, making other people better for it. Also, neither uh, Eden nor King was in this episode, yeah. strangely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was, like, strictly on the kids, yeah. which is nice, too, because, I mean... If you're gonna ha like put in like a school storyline, you are gonna have to focus on the kids mm -hmm. purely at times. And I get that wasn't the initial concept of this show to have a school. Like this was, you know, just to fit with the Disney brand. But even so, what they do with it, uh, subverting expectation, changing around what we come to know about the typical magical schools, I think they've done a pretty good job of that so far. Yep. That teacher was a dick, though. Yes. It's like, oh, you can't be a captain. Quitters don't make good captains. It's like. She quit because mm -hmm. she wasn't good at it. Like, why should she have stuck with something she naturally wasn't good at? And when she mm -hmm. went into something she was good at, and she's pursuing something she mm -hmm. is genuinely good at. So why would you, like, stigmatize her because of something she n wasn't good at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your bitterness does not make any sense at all. It's like, what, do you feel that you failed as a teacher because she left? Is that what it is? Honestly, all most of the teachers in this are failures. Yeah. Like, given how they let Willow be bullied for this long without consequence to anyone, the fact that they let Basha go around act like she's so much better than everybody else, we definitely know that the staff here sucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only one who's set, who's halfway decent is Bunk. Bunk. Yeah, Bunk. Yeah, Bunk. <laughs> But even him, like, you can tell he has no qualms with like, partially torturing students. He's kind of weak-willed in a way. Like, he'll do something when he doesn't necessarily see possible repercussions for it. But yeah, if it's going to threaten his status... Well, I think also he has a mild bloodlust, too, so mm. he doesn't mind if others, like, share in it. Wait, Basha killed someone? Oh, happy day. <laughs> But I think ultimately, in the end, it is the teachers and the headmasters that are learning from the students. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, there, there's absolutely going to be a uh, a change. It's nice, too, to see how the uh, the tension track, the, the kids who now are enrolled in two different tracks, are really thriving, and how they even have plans to, like, change the way that future mm -hmm. tracks and future covens are, like, handled. Like, that's really what you need in this. Mm -hmm. And obviously we know that won't happen until Bellis is out of power, but... Or they finally, you know, rebel against yeah. Bellows. Given that it's it's pretty clear that aside from Bellows doing his face reveal, there's still people that are still very pissed with him uh, after, uh, you know, the season one finale. I mean, he kind of smoothed that over by allowing Ida to go free and saying he no longer had any grudges against her. Because he had, like, other plans in mind. So I don't think that many people are pissed at him. Yeah, but there's still that uh, general uh, animosity, I'd say. The match has been lit. I, I know there's definitely, like, people that now are highly suspicious. But, again, I, I reiterate it's going to take something extreme for the masses to willingly turn on him. Yeah. And that's before he makes them all drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> 
Not to mention the Blights now seeing Bellos for who he really is. Mm. And that they're now basically under threat to uh, serve him. I'm wondering what's going to happen with that plot line too. If like mm. the parents are actually going to align with Luz and them to fight against... Because they're like one of the most influential families. Yep. So if they turn, I'm wondering if the rest of the families are going to turn as well. Yeah. I feel like Bellos is really in the process of tightening his grip on everybody. Before long, people are going to start to have their image of him completely changed. Personally, I think the thing that's going to do it for everybody is if he starts actually actively collecting talismans. Yeah. They've already stated that they've run out of his side supply, and you know they were going to hand over the kids, too. Yep. So now I'm wondering if Bellows gets desperate enough, if he's going to actually summon everybody to donate their talismans, like donate mm. their talismans under false pretenses. And the thing is, that's a big source of their magic, too, in certain aspects. So once they figure out what he's doing, I feel like a lot of people are going to turn. Mm-hmm. And hell, even the uh, the coven heads seem to pretty much know what's going on. The guards are starting to regret their having joined uh, the coven. <laughs> Poor Steve. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before everybody's eyes are open. Here's open. <laughs> so what's the next episode? Next episode we have Reaching Out. I should also mention that all of the remaining titles have been dropped for the season. So uh, we now know the the first letter of each one mm. for the season completely spells out seek the key, fear the lock. Hmm. Which I'm sure is going to have very much to do with uh, Day of Unity. Makes sense. I guess it's they're referring to the Titan's key and what it actually goes to. Because we know that's like the Mm -hmm. last source of Titan's blood, to our knowledge. Yep. But the question is, what does that go to exactly? And we know that the key is in correlation with the door. But the question, too, is, is this door going to go to the human world, or is it going to go to something else that we're not prepared for? It'll go to Amphibia. (laughs) Just to bring the crossover we've all been wishing for. (laughs) Just to release all the possibilities and make even more fan theories go wild. Because that's all fandom is about. Making theories, even if they're nonsensical and will never come true. Well, here's the thing, though. That is very likely, given how much multiverse is in all of these shows. I know, I've been theorizing about it forever. It's just, mm-hmm. I don't want to get my poor little fan heart broken again. <laughs> Cause I, keep saying, I mean, I'm not going to die on that hill, but I'm saying it's entirely possible. I know. I'm just hesitant about getting my hopes up is all. It's like, I want it to happen, and they keep dropping hints that it's going to happen, mm-hmm. but then it's not going to happen, and I'm going to be sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. I, all I know is that we got a lot to look forward to. This series is, like, really knocking it out of, par- out of the park, in my opinion, so I can't wait to see what they do for the next episode. But until then, I'm Katniss. McBerry. I'm Doug McBerry. Sports! Ah!